This episode is brought to you by the Deeper Christian Life Network. The Deeper Christian Life Network is an online network designed for mentoring and connection among those who want to deepen their spiritual walk. The network includes exclusive master classes that you can take at your own pace and much more. The master classes are conference messages based on themes and or letters in the New Testament that cannot be accessed anywhere else. The network opens up for registration periodically throughout the year. Go to thedeeperchristianlife.com and check out samples and join the waitlist if you're interested. Welcome, welcome to another edition of the Christ is All podcast. Today we're going to talk about the music world of the 60s and 70s and its relationship to Christian leaders today. Now, the 60s and 70s were well before my time when I started listening to contemporary music. My genre was the 1980s and then the 1990s. Many of you listening to this your genre is much later. Some of you listening, it's much earlier. But I'm a student of history, and music history is one of my interests. And the 1960s and 1970s were a remarkable time in music. And so what I want to do in this episode is talk about the music scene back then and what we can learn from it spiritually in the 21st century. Now, one of the big things that marked the 1960s is the British invasion to the United States, where you had enduring bands like the Beatles, the Animals, the Rolling Stones, and the Who, who came into the U.S. and became enormous. Then the California sound emerged with the Beach Boys. After that, you had The Doors, Janis Joplin, and a host of other bands breaking new ground. And then other artists emerged that had a heavier sound, for example, the Yardbirds, Cream, Led Zeppelin, and the inimitable Jimi Hendrix. You also had Bob Dylan and Joni Mitchell, who inspired many of these artists and vice versa. Now, what's incredible to me about this time period is that virtually all of the musicians that I just named met each other, knew each other, hung out together, listened to one another, with adoration and respect. If you do searches online, you will see some of these great artists spending time together, jamming together, hanging out together, etc. And they had the effect of encouraging one another and inspiring one another. More than that, they collaborated with one another. For example, Eric Clapton went to see the Allman Brothers and was turned upside down by listening to Dwayne Allman's remarkable guitar playing. Well, Clapton invited Dwayne Allman to appear on his album, Layla, and other assorted love songs. And so on that record, you could hear two of the greatest rock guitar players ever to breathe oxygen jamming together on that album. In the same way, George Harrison brought Eric Clapton into the studio for the Beatles' White Album to play on his song, While My Guitar Gently Weeps. There was collaboration also between the three greatest rock guitarists, according to many music experts, Jimmy Page, Eric Clapton, and Jeff Beck. They played together in concerts. Later, there was collaboration with Paul McCartney and Michael Jackson. You can also see collaboration among the greatest comedians. Dana Carvey and Conan O'Brien were friends for many, many years, even until this day. Jerry Seinfeld and David Letterman. And even in the world of entrepreneurs, the most influential, high-level entrepreneurs attend one another's seminars, supporting each other, learning from each other. But getting back to the music artists, they not only collaborated, but they commended each other, even giving each other opportunities. For example, in 1967, Jimi Hendrix took the world by storm with his mind-blowing performance at the Monterey Pop Festival. But how did he get there? The hosts of the festival originally invited the Beatles to appear, but Paul McCartney declined. 
because the Beatles were so busy creating their next album. McCartney, however, told the hosts that they had to invite this guy named Jimi Hendrix because of his amazing talent. And they did. And that was a memorable event for the people who were there, who are much older than me. You can see footage of it online. Now, I have a question. How often does this kind of thing happen with the leading Christians of our time? And the answer is rarely. I have watched numerous interviews with many of these artists, and I simply marvel how each of them would praise the others, not just from afar, but because they took the time to get to know them and watch them perform. Each time I've observed these things, I've had two reactions. One was awe. How incredible it was that these musicians, all playing for different bands and all enormously talented in their own right, respected each other and spoke well of each other in public. In fact, I was just watching uh, an interview where Jimmy Page was talking about the Beatles. All positive, with high regard. Now, there's no doubt that some of them struggled with hidden jealousy from time to time, but these artists paid attention to what their peers were doing. And they gleaned from each other. And they had a great deal of class to speak well of one another publicly. Some of them were even inspired by the others. George Harrison once asked Led Zeppelin why they didn't write love ballads. And in response, Jimmy Page wrote the Rain Song. Bob Dylan inspired John Lennon to write Norwegian Wood and Nowhere Man and many other songs. Dylan moved to an electric sound in response to what the other musicians of the mid-60s were doing. In fact, Jimi Hendrix took one of Dylan's songs all along the watchtower and raised it a few notches, and Dylan said he loved the remake. Pet Sounds by the Beach Boys inspired Sgt. Pepper by the Beatles, and on and on. These artists of that genre all pushed one another to create better work, and their networking relationships created better music for the entire world. So my first reaction was all. My second reaction is a troubling question. Why can't those whom God is using today on the Christian landscape have the same kinds of relationships? Why can't speakers and authors who are turning the sod in the Christian world have places to hang out, dialogue, and inspire each other? Why don't they invite each other to their conferences? Why don't they do any networking? Think of your top favorite Christian authors and ask yourself, why aren't they spending time together socially? Why aren't they learning from one another? Why aren't they recommending each other for speaking gigs? Why aren't they inviting one another to their conferences? And by the way, I'm not talking about those cliques where everyone from the same movement or denomination pats one another on the back and shares the same conferences. That's like John Lennon commending Ringo Starr. I'm speaking about something much wider. I'm speaking of evangelical Christian authors who don't know one another, relating to each other in ministry, despite their disagreements on peripheral doctrines. In my book, Regrace, I have a chapter where George Whitfield commended John Wesley, despite their huge disagreements in theology. Now, I'm voicing a dream here, and I have shared it before in print form. As most of you know, I have collaborated with several authors on different projects over the years, and I've shared the conference platform with a number of other authors and speakers in various events over the years. But I'm talking about something wider, more focused, more intentional, and more substantial. Something like what we saw happening among the greatest music artists of the 60s and 70s. And those people weren't even following Jesus Christ. Perhaps all of what I'm saying will stay a dream, but I suppose it can't hurt to articulate it, and maybe one of you listening could put something like this together someday, or move the needle in this direction. There is a related article that I have written entitled, A Ministry Dream Team. It's in the show notes if you have access to this podcast in Podbean. It's also on my blog, and there's even an audio on the topic in this very podcast. Well, thanks for listening. May the Lord take this and use it for the advance of his kingdom. Until next time.
God bless. Hey guys, this is a postscript just before you head out and we part ways. I have created a bundle of free resources. This would include my other podcasts, the YouTube channel, several free ebooks, free seminars, and other free resources. And you can find all of that at frankviola.com. And if you go to frankviola.com, you will see in the top menu a link that says free stuff. You just click on that and you will be taken to the free resources page. Also, a number of you have asked if you could donate to help defray the costs of the podcasts and also to express appreciation for the value that you've been receiving. You're under no obligation to donate. I don't ask for donations, but should you have it on your heart to do so, you can go to frankviola.us. That's frankviola.us. And that will take you to a donate page. There's three different options you can use to donate, all of them simple. Thank you very much, and God bless.